Hello and welcome to the first official episode of Tux Lives, the podcast of all things Linuxy. And we are just under 1,000 subscribers. I am hoping to push that over the edge before the end of the week. Hello to all new subscribers. And uh, I am going to get to your top 10 comments and questions very quickly. Uh, but first, I just wanted to talk about uh, two things. One, uh, some people are slightly confused because I'm running two formats here. And uh, I don't know if that's feasible. I may have to just do this. We'll see. But people were very confused uh, about my video on Bible debunking. Okay, that is for a very tiny subculture that I used to be a part of. Don't worry about it. I'm leaving it up. It's there as a PSA to help some people out that I've never met before. I just hope they can find it. And don't worry about it. But uh, anyway, pros and cons of using Linux for one month. Number one, privacy. You really do feel a difference. You don't realize how intensely you are being monitored until you get off Windows. And I found something out that is hella creepy. Apparently, when you turn off your Windows computer, it doesn't actually turn off. It goes into deep hibernation mode. And that is why even if you don't have an update, sometimes you'll quote unquote turn it back on and something has been changed. So none of that. All of those weird things that you got used to, they are gone. It's no longer a part of the experience. Um, also, just the, um, the interactivity through the terminal of being able to really kind of talk to your hardware and talk to your operating system, you start to develop a kind of a relationship with your machine, a kind of friendly relationship. Uh, it does get a little uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey uh, when you're talking uh, back and forth and getting information. And it's kind of a pro anacon, but that reflexivity, um, I'm learning the soft, the free software that I was using is a lot more responsive than uh, I knew. And I'm also finding my hardware is more responsive. And particularly this mouse here that I have, this is a very old gateway mouse that I found that was still in the plastic. And I named it Tarkus. <laughs> this is what the mouse I'm using is kind of shaped like. Tarkus is this uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer progressive rock album from the 70s. <laughs> and it is literally about an armadillo tank robot uh, battling in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. And uh, yeah, this is kind of what my mouse looks like. So I named it Tarkus. And this thing is actually much more sensitive than I ever knew. I started using this about a month before I switched to Linux. And uh, yeah, I have to be careful with it, especially uh, in programs that involve editing like Audacity and even in word processing. Uh, you got to be careful uh, with this. So it's kind of just for fun. I don't know if I'm keeping this mouse forever. I was just looking for a clicky mouse to go with my clickier keyboard and uh, it fit the bill. But uh, both keyboard and mouse are probably going to change before the end of the year. But uh, it's good that I had it because it shows me how responsive Linux is. And there's a whole lot more that you can do. Uh, you can get a lot more mileage out of everything. It's very dynamic, but you also got to be careful. So <laughs> there is that. And uh, as far as the cons go... Uh, pretty much it just boils down to one thing, and that is my transcription program over here. If anybody knows of a really good audio transcription program uh, that I can get for Linux, let me know. I've tried all the ones in my repo. This was the best one I could find, but uh, I find I have to toggle between the page and this. They don't run uh, simultaneously as my old uh, transcription program used to. I've gotten used to it. I'd still like to upgrade. So if anyone is doing audio transcription, transcribing audio to text manually, and they have a better program, please tell me. So those are just about the cons. I mean, it's a learning curve. 
and uh, things are a lot more sensitive. I'm having to learn how to handle things more gently. I'm also learning how to like use things because again, in Windows, you, you never really, ha it does it for you. Uh, but mostly positive, and I'm certainly never going back, and I'd rather adapt. So let's get to you. Let's get to your comments, your questions. And here you see before you the uh, top 10. Uh, these are the ones I've gotten more than any others. And here I am going to uh, answer you. So number one, <laughs> your computer is old and slow. I know. I know. I think I said it myself. Uh, this is the number one comment. Your computer is old and slow. Uh, right now, I don't need a supercomputer. I'm doing very light computing. And uh, I'm, I'm not exactly uh, walking around with $100 bills falling accidentally out of my pocket. So for the moment, I'm cool. Things work fine. Uh, I don't really need to soup up. And that brings us uh, to number two. Uh, sheer avalanche of comments and questions. Uh, am I going to go SSD? Am I going to uh, upgrade my ROM? Uh, not right now. Uh, by the end of the year, I think I will. Uh, we're all going to go SSD. All of us are going to go SSD the day of the spinning hard drive for laptops and PCs is apparently over. Uh, so yeah, I've looked up everything everyone has suggested. And I agree, SSD is the way to go. But right at this moment, I'm not exactly taxing this machine. It's uh, got a lot of life in it. But uh, I do believe I will uh, move on to SSD and upgrade things as I go along instead of buying an entirely new computer. Uh, number three, have you tried Manjaro? Yes, I tried Manjaro. And... It was a surrealistic experience. I take it this is an Arch-derived distro. Uh, I'm not ready for it yet. I'll tell you what happened with Monjaro is, uh, first of all, getting it to install, I had to try it three times. And finally, I got it installed. And then it was like, uh, Alice in Wonderland, you know, looking glass land. <laughs> I, ha I was not ready. I, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I what I was doing. The um, panel disappeared and the menu disappeared. And then I lost right click. And it was about three days. I couldn't get anything done on it. It would, uh, you can tell me, tell me you Manjaro people, people of Manjaro. I'm making an open appeal to the people of Manjaro. Uh, what exactly was I doing? Because it would log me out while I was doing something, so I had to log back in as if it had gone into sleep mode or something, and um, things would work, and then they wouldn't work. They'd stop working in the middle of doing something. They'd just stop working. And yes, I verify my ISOs and all of that, uh, but I, my experience was after three days, I wiped Manjaro, and I wiped Manjaro with number four, have you tried Fedora? I went from Manjaro to Fedora. And uh, yeah, I loved Fedora. It was so much fun, but I really didn't have a use for it. And I'll get to that in five. It was fun setting up all these uh, sequences of windows and toggling between them and... But it was on a laptop. I was just reading. There really wasn't much to do with it. Um, so I played with it. Again, I played with it for about three or four days. A lot of things were different from what I'm used to. I was getting used to it, but it, it just wasn't that passionate of an experience for me. And I had another weird experience where I turned it on and I couldn't log in for love or money. And I wasn't that much in love with Fedora that I was going to keep it. Uh, both of these are incredibly attractive looking. The graphics are fantastic. Uh, they just look great. They're cool. They've got a lot of fun features. But um, I'm just coming from Windows to Mint. 
the most vanilla basic distro of all time. I mean, I know there are some uh, light distros or minimalist distros, and uh, I tried MX Linux. MX, I guess, is even more basic, and I tried Peppermint. But yeah, that's the world I'm in, is Mint and MX and Peppermint. Uh, these were uh, too much for me right now, but I will return to them. They are intriguing. I do want to learn. I do want to get into this. Uh, so that's to answer the many, many Manjaro, Fedora, and Arch users uh, who have commented. Uh, lots of cool stuff to discover here, and I will get back to it again. That leads us to number five, tiling window managers. I, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> I keep watching videos about it and, and reading things, and I'm... I'm still not exactly sure what on earth this is and what it's for. <laughs> so if someone could direct me to something uh, easy to understand and explanatory, I'm not sure I, I really see the, uh, the point of the tiling window managers. It looks cool. Um, I do like the idea of having certain projects uh, all on the desktop at the same time, but I'm learning Emacs and Emacs pretty much does that already. So I'm not really sure I need tiling window managers, but uh, let me know, uh, get specific because I'm just getting, you need to try tiling window managers. You need to try them, try this, try that, try this, try that. And I, I'm so lost. I don't know from tiling window managers. Uh, number six, GNU plus Linux, Stallman, Torvalds, Foss. Many, many, many comments about this. This is worthy of a full hour-long video. But I'll just go uh, through these very briefly. GNU plus Linux. Yes. But I'm not going to say it. Because it's a mouthful. and pretty, uh, This is a very small world we're living in. And most people are aware of this. So I don't really feel there's uh, a real need to uh, get into it, uh, you know, say it every single time. And it, it seems kind of like a subculture of a subculture. It's like, you have to say it. And I don't respond well to that. So <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to say it. But I accept it. I accept it in my heart. Uh, it is true. Uh, this is what we are we are using. Uh, it is GNU uh, plus Linux. Uh, Stallman, uh, I read a biography of him. I'm learning Emacs. I think he is a genius. Uh, I think he's totally bug nuts. You know, he's not crazy about everything. So, uh, some of the things he says make sense. And I get where he's coming from. And I do agree with him about a lot of things about what has gone wrong in the tech industry and how we're being treated. But then he has all sorts of political views that are extreme that I don't agree with. Um, but yeah, he's a genius. He's he's a brilliant man and uh, kind of a mad prophet, you know, out of the Old Testament. <laughs> These prophets that would like eat excrement and walk around naked with a yoke uh, on their neck and things. Uh, we need that in the world. We need some mad prophets. I think ultimately he's benign. Uh, and Linus Torvalds, I read his autobiography just for fun. And uh, he's a lot less vocal about things. Uh, according to his autobiography, this is very Finnish. Uh, they don't hold forth their opinion all the time and push it on people. It's impolite to ask opinions. Uh, and you can tell he, he gets like embarrassed. He kind of turns red. And gets embarrassed when he talks about uh, social and political issues. And oh, that's good because I'm sick of hearing about everyone's politics, aren't you? Uh, wouldn't you like them all to just shut up? Uh, so these are controversial figures, but they are core figures. And unlike Gates and uh, Jobs, uh, these are real programmers. These are people who have made major contributions for us, the users. Gates and Jobs just built prisons for users. Stallman and Torvalds want to free users. 
and I sound like a character from Tron. <laughs> I don't care. Um, so as eccentric and crazy and sometimes controversial as these people are, uh, they're the real deal. They care about us, not about profits. And I'm a capitalist, but you have to also make things for people. Even if you make money off it, you should still think about other people. So I admire both of them, despite their extreme eccentricities and rough edges. And free and open source software, I'm just learning. I'm just learning. And uh, I'm getting hit with very complex technical and moral questions. Uh, I'm not there yet, kids. Chill out. <laughs> let me catch up. Let me catch my breath. And let me catch up to you. But uh, I'm on board. I think it's so healthy to have this. Uh, we, we can't lose true free and open source software development. It, it must remain an option and continue to be supported uh, how, however you can. Uh, so I am on board. So that's as much as I, this is like, you know, huge subject. Number seven, games. I don't play them. I don't play games. Once in a while, I play my favorite game, which is DOS Stratego. That's my favorite video game. And uh, I went through a, couple, a year or so where I played all the LucasArts games because uh, I missed most, not all of them, but I missed most of them in the 90s. And that was fun. I used Defend and I enjoyed that, but I am not a gamer. So you're out of luck asking me questions about gaming benchmarks for PCs on Linux here. Right over my head. I have not got the slightest clue. So thank you for chiming in, but I don't play games. Uh, terminal shortcuts. Thank you. I've received about 10 billion terminal shortcuts. Um, I, I'm try I've tried a lot of them out and they work. I don't know how many will become habitual, but I really appreciate this. Thank you. So many people contributed uh, terminal shortcuts. I really appreciate it. But there's no way to process all of them. I've probably received uh, 20 to 30 of these. And uh, yeah, they're not all, like I said, they're not all applicable to me. I don't mind a little, a little typing. I like to type, actually. Uh, but thank you. Uh, keep them coming. Uh, I'm sure they'll all sink in and I'll find a situation to use most of them in, in the long run. Uh, number nine, my little HP 11 Wi-Fi card. So many uh, helpful suggestions. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. But I like that this little laptop does not have internet access. It's like an oasis. And uh, I haven't needed to use internet on it uh, in weeks. And all I do is write on it. And I love that. So I'm actually glad it does not have a working Wi-Fi card. And I'm not interested in getting that fixed anymore. So thank you. Uh, so many comments uh, of ways to, to get this fixed. But I don't want to get it fixed. So it's never... It's I have the dongle and I'll use the dongle when I need it, but I like being disconnected. And I'm now having uh, no internet days where I just focus on things that have to get done and then uh, focus on relaxing without internet. No internet. I think we all need to start weaning ourselves off the internet. Um, it's a, not a safe environment if you value privacy. And there's not much on it, too, to be honest. So uh, I'm moving away from using the internet a lot. And next episode, I'm going to talk about surfing the net through the terminal, which I much prefer now. Uh, last, number 10, I've gotten many, not as many of these, but I've gotten at least 10 comments that I was using Windows wrong. Hey, I started with MS-DOS in like 1985. I've been using Windows for over 20 years. I'm pretty much what would have been termed, I guess, a power user. 
that I would set everything up the way I wanted it. I knew how to, uh, I used to, before they took it out of your hands, I used to be able to manage the system. Um, so I was a, a solid, at least. I was just a solid Windows user. Um, this is one of the things I object to. This endless treadmill of hardware upgrading and driver update upgrading and OS upgrading. It's a scam. They're just going to keep you running in that hamster wheel forever. And I don't want to do it forever. I don't want to ever do it again. So uh, that's your opinion. I was using Windows wrong. You like Windows? You use Windows. It nothing to do with me. Stick with Windows. I don't go on Win Windows videos and leave Linux comments. Um, I'm no longer interested in Windows. If that changes, I will let you know. But uh, yeah, I don't really see it as necessary. So there you are, the top 10 questions and comments that I have received. And uh, what do you want to hear? What do you want to know? What do you want me to cover? Leave comments and I will do my very best to accommodate you. And I do have some things planned in the future that I will get to as soon as possible. But that is it for episode one of Tux Lives. Thank you for listening. If you're digging this, please subscribe, like, hit the notification. <laughs> you all know the drill. You don't need me to tell you. And uh, give my other videos a try if you're interested in anthropology and mythology. I, I would like to do this parallel. But if one's a dog and the other one's a winner, I've got, I got one road ahead of me. Uh, so we'll see how that turns out. So thank you for listening. I will see you next time. And until that time arrives, good luck to you.